In May of 2021, at age 27, Vitalik Buterin, creator of Ethereum, became the world's youngest crypto billionaire. In November 2021, the crypto market surged to almost $3 trillion. Cryptocurrencies have just collapsed. Their current value is less than $1 trillion. The rest is history. Buterin is the proud owner of the digital wallet that contained about 1.5 billion just too short or long months ago. Since then, the price of the Ether token that he invented has plummeted by 55%. Ready to find out everything about the Ethereum founder, about his digital nomad lifestyle, about the current crypto crisis, and about the metaverse and the future of life? Vitaly Vitalik Buterin is a 30-year-old Russian-Canadian computer programmer. His father was a computer scientist, so he has great computer genes or codes. At the age of six, his parents emigrated to Canada for better jobs. In third grade, Vitalik got placed in a class for gifted children. And <laughs> no wonder, he excelled in math, programming, and economics. He attended the University of Waterloo in Canada and became a research assistant for cryptographer Ian Goldberg. Goldberg is the co-creator of Off The Record Messaging. In 2011, he co-founded Bitcoin Magazine. In 2013, he started connecting with developers all over the world interested in coding. Later in that year, he published a white paper proposing Ethereum. His idea is that Bitcoin needs a scripting language, but he didn't get enough support. So, he proposed the development of a brand new platform with a more general scripting language, Ethereum in other words. In 2014, Buterin dropped out of university because he got awarded a grant of 100k from the Theo Fellowship. He now had time to pursue his crypto dream that he called Ethereum. In 2014, Vitalik Buterin released Ethereum on a blockchain with his father, computer programmer Dmitry Buterin, Charles Hoskinson, Gavin Wood, Anthony DeLorio, and Joseph Lubin. Ethereum is described as a decentralized mining network and software development platform rolled into one. It facilitates the creation of cryptocurrencies that share a single blockchain. During late 2013 and early 2014, Ethereum started growing more and more popular. In 2020, he tells us this about cryptocurrencies. I am truly grateful to have the opportunity to work in such an interesting and interdisciplinary area of industry where I have the chance to interact with cryptographers, mathematicians, and economists prominent in their fields to help build software and tools that already affect tens of thousands of people around the world, and to work on advanced problems in computer science, economics, and philosophy every week. On June 2, 2017, Buterin met with President Vladimir Putin himself to discuss the political and economic implications of cryptocurrencies in Russia. Putin supported his plan to establish ties with Russian partners. Buterin created the Ethereum blockchain and the Ether cryptocurrency and has collaborated with cryptocurrency libraries, wallets, and marketplaces. The major source of Buterin's income is the value of the Ethereum cryptocurrency that he owns. He also receives a huge salary from Ethereum Foundation. He personally owns around 352,000 Ethereum currencies. But if Ethereum isn't doing well, what does that mean for him? It means that Buterin's net worth changes daily and sometimes dramatically due to the change in the value of cryptocurrencies. One moment, he could be a billionaire, the next, a millionaire, then he could be bankrupt and with the Russian cryptocurrency mafia and the Mexican drug cartels on his tail. For a brief period of time in May 2021, Buterin became the world's youngest crypto billionaire with a net worth of $21 billion. The price of Ethereum soared as high as $3,374. But since then, crypto holdings have been pummeled by a significant drop in prices of digital currencies as well as the turmoil engulfing the algorithmic stablecoin TerraUSD and its Luna token. In 2021, Ethereum lost half its value. In May 2022, he announced that he is no longer a billionaire. Boo-hoo! But please don't just cry for poor Vitalik. He isn't the only crypto billionaire who has suffered. Changpeng Zhao, founder of the crypto exchange Binance, has also lost more than 80 billion or 84% of his wealth, leaving him only 2 or 3 million times wealthier than all the rest of us put together and multiplied by a million. This dramatic loss in net worth must be blamed on the volatility of cryptocurrencies. It's a total gamble. Even the billionaires who create the currencies can't guarantee that other billionaires will collaborate. 
Then there are the professional crypto hacking teams that pickpocket billions from wallets. It's no safer than the Paris Metro. Buterin lives an eccentric lifestyle. Believe it or not, he doesn't own a house. He created Ethereum in Switzerland, so he lived there for several years, but now he lives in Singapore and travels around the world. He doesn't travel for leisure, he travels for business. Buterin has never been seen vacationing. Surprisingly for a billionaire, he doesn't own any cars either. Buterin spends most of his time researching. He's also a huge gamer. His love of gaming inspired him to create decentralized cryptocurrencies. In World of Warcraft, his character has been nerfed by patch 3.1.0. This is what he says about gaming. I happily played World of Warcraft during 2007 to 2010, but one day Blizzard removed the damage component from my beloved Warlock Siphon Life spell. I cried myself to sleep, and on that day I realized what horror centralized services can bring. I soon decided to quit. Since 2017, Vitalik has been involved in so-called charity. He pays his donations in virtual currencies so they'd better spend them fast before they go up in smoke. In 2017, he gave 763,970 of Ether to the Machine Intelligence Research Institute MIRI. Okay, he might be donating to robots, but at least he's giving something back. In 2018, he pledged 2.4 million Ether to research into rejuvenation biotechnologies and human life extensions through the SENS Research Foundation in California, USA. In 2020, he donated 50,000 to the SENS Research Foundation to research aging and aging-related diseases. Then, he granted 336 million of Dojalon Mars to the Methuselah Foundation for research into extending the human lifespan. So, at least he is investing in longevity and eternal life. In 2021, he donated 1.14 billion worth of Shiba coins to India's Crypto COVID Relief Fund. Hopefully, they managed to cash it in on time. In November 2022, FTX, the multi-billion dollar crypto exchange, collapsed. This unleashed the current tidal wave of volatility in crypto. Sam Bankman-Fried, the founder of FTX, lost nearly $16 billion in a couple of days. Even crypto geniuses like Vitalik Buterin are crying. FTX acted as a chaotic web of more than 100 different companies investing in other businesses, a hedge fund which traded crypto for profit, two US exchanges and one international exchange where the rules were much freer. Investors bought cryptocurrency by transferring money fiat to FTX, which operated like a bureau de change. FTX took a cut of every transaction. Other investors traded on the international exchange, profiting or losing as the prices of crypto assets soared and dipped. FTX crashed because this hedge fund used their FTT token to make risky loans. Binance, its main competitor, sold its holdings in FTX, causing a panic in the market. One bankruptcy specialist sums up the death of FTX. Never in my career have I seen such a complete failure of corporate controls and such a complete absence of trustworthy financial information as occurred here. The Guardian newspaper in the UK explains why cryptocurrencies are so dangerous. Cryptocurrencies are a bet on the idea that a world where government power over money and finance is ended would be a better one. The collapse of FTX is perfect evidence that actually government regulations over finance are pretty useful. Linda Lucci, editor of Tech Target, sums up the metaverse, the future of life as we know it. Imagine a virtual world where billions of people live, work, shop, learn, and interact with each other, all from the comfort of their couches in the physical world. In this world, the computer screens we use today to connect to a world wide web of information have become portals to a 3D virtual realm that's like real life, only bigger and better. Digital facsimiles of ourselves, avatars, move freely from one experience to another, taking our identities and our money with us. Computer genius Vitalik Buterin believes that the metaverse is inevitable.